And thank you all so much for um, checking out the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Hello, friends, fellow artists, and Art League family. This is William McMahon. I'm here uh, with Art League Online, and I'm going to be bringing you How to Draw a Human Ear, Part 2. Hope you enjoyed the video. So today in Drawing an Ear, Part 2, I am going to be taking my initial drawing which was done in order to show viewers steps that could be taken to render an ear in a general generic manner the kind of way of conceptualizing thinking about building it and the shapes that go into creating an ear in part two what I'm going to be doing is trying to make the drawing appear softer and more representational and then also more three-dimensional and so I'm going to be right as you see here I blocked in the shape of the cartilage inside the ear and I conceptualize that as being similar to the form of a Y or a stethoscope but there is no harsh line around the cartilage it just sort of rises from the back flesh and rolls up and then over and I was trying to use my contour lines, line following form, I gave myself this guideline here for how to go about making my marks. In order to make a drawing appear more three-dimensional, I'm going to need to apply a range of values. To have a drawing look 3D and dynamic, you're going to want to have rich dark values, bright white values, and a range of grays in between there. And the only way that any person can know where to assign these values is through understanding light source. I've been establishing my light source in the upper left corner in these drawings, so I think light source coming down this way. Where are highlights occurring on these different forms? Where are shadows occurring on the different forms? And where are shadows being cast? So for example, we have this ear flap here that's existing beyond the cartilage. There is going to be cast shadow from the ear flap onto the cartilage. Also, the entire ear is going to be sending a cast shadow from the ear which is protruding off the head onto the head the kind of neck so I'm not raising my pencil much off the paper right now I'm applying blended value but I'm still being mindful of the contour so even in blending I can be mindful of direction of my pencil and that can inform the viewer right now I'm using my Faber-Castell 6B jumbo pencil this is a good way to get value onto the page more quickly it's a thicker mark making tool. I'm going through and I'm softening some of these marks down and I'm, I'm working towards eventually getting rid of the outline of the cartilage. May as well go ahead and do that now. Go and use my Tombow eraser, my Tombow Mono Zero. Great tool for precision. And we think of drawing in general as being a push and a pull. We get information down on the page, then we respond to that information accordingly. So. I'm going to use the Tombow to go ahead and get rid of the, those lines. I'm also going to then be using my, my kneaded eraser, which is great for softer removal of value, smooth transitions. Tombow is great for precision, and right now I just want to get rid of that line. All right, I'll clean up some of my initial measuring marks. And then what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to take my finger, and I'm going to blend out the drawing in general. It's going to soften my edges. It's going to get me value across the drawing it's going to help me get rid of this edge around the wire stethoscope shaped cartilage form and the argument against blending with one's finger is that we are always going to have a certain amount of natural oil on our skin just based off of being human and so that can affect your paper and you can also have some manually added in additional oils or coloration on your fingers as well, based off of uh, what you've been doing or perhaps what you've been consuming. And if anyone ever notices any neon orange residue on any of my renderings, 
I just would ask everyone to please understand that that bit of neon orange powder was put there intentionally as an intentional compositional decision. All right, push and pull, soften, push my value more, come back in with my jumbo pencil. Now I'm trying to keep, even though I'm again blending, I'm kind of following these marks and I'm trying to keep these values more smooth because the flat part of the ear recessed behind the cartilage is going to be more consistent and more just sort of flat. The cartilage is going to have the rise and fall. So I'm now trying to take the viewer up that rise. Here's the earbud. I'll put a little value on that. A lot of times the earlobe will be an area that will show a bit more value or coloration. Cast shadow from the ear flap onto the cartilage. This little part here from the ear flap is one additional transitional area from the kind of exterior into the ear. And I'm going to push my darks closer into the earbud. That's going to be the orifice as we would enter into the ear cavity. I'll come switch back to my mechanical pencil because the edge of the ear is going to be fairly distinct. So I'm going to kind of come over here and be more precise here. I'm going to crisp up a couple of edges. This is on the side opposite light source too, so I can feel comfortable leaning. As Seneco will tell you, edges are an opportunity to showcase light source and texture. So always be mindful of your edges. Imply edges closer to the light source. Feel free to lean heavier and be more descriptive with your marks or to showcase texture more on the side opposite light source. Now I'm trying to to work in a timely manner for the video. But even now, and I'm staying kind of put in my chair, I'm leaning back to try to observe the drawing from a little bit more of a distance. It's good to check a drawing from a distance, from up close different ranges. It's good to walk away from your drawings. Give yourself a little bit of, of distance from the drawing, physical distance and mental distance, and then return to it. Get that edge distinct. Come back, clean up that stray mark. Get this edge a little more crisp as well. Although the line is going to be more minimal because that's going to again be where the light is hitting the edge of the ear. So when you use the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser or any um, kind of distinct eraser like this, sometimes you can be more soft and nuanced with your um, needed eraser. But whenever you, you're, you're going in and doing this kind of erasing, it can be a bit kind of distinct, almost harsh, depending on what kind of highlight you want. So I'll, I'll erase and then I'll soften back down So the distinct edge here. Push my darks back behind that. Being mindful of my contour lines. So again, you see me, I'll kind of put lines in, then I'll soften them down, I'll erase a little bit. I'll bounce back and forth between different tools. If I was drawing on my own, I'd be rotating my paper regularly to facilitate marks that are most comfortable for me. You see me as well. Continue to just bounce around between the different parts of the drawing, always wanting to evaluate the piece as a whole. The nice thing about this sort of formula too for drawing the ear with the Y-shaped cartilage is that really once you get this, once you feel comfortable with this technique of drawing an ear in profile, the formula really stays the same as you draw the ear from two-thirds turn or even from straight on, the ear just flattens and compresses together. But the, the kind of general formula remains the same. So in future videos, I will, will show how, how ears can be rendered from different angles of observation. As I'm moving towards conclusion on this video, I'd like to thank everyone for, for checking it out. Please Consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, Art League Online. We're working um, very diligently right now to try to produce some very high-level content that we will be releasing regularly and consistently. Really appreciate any likes, comments, anything like that. 
I hope this video has been instructional for you all. Please keep drawing. And I look forward to catching up with everyone during the next video. Thank you all so much for checking out the video. Please consider subscribing to our channel, Art League Online. Myself, Rio, Scott Merrill, we're all working very diligently to try to bring you all some uh, top-notch material. Keep drawing.